Today, we're about to unravel the captivating lives of five brilliant minds who developed astonishing creations that captured hearts, minds, and millions of eyes. But here's the twist. Their monumental achievements didn't always lead to the golden success story you might expect. We're diving headfirst into the often unpredictable realm where creativity and commerce collide. Let's uncover the stories of innovation, passion, and determination that prove that true legacy goes beyond mere wealth. Our first tale brings us into the world of entertainment and innovation, as we uncover the fascinating journey of Daisuke Inoue, the unsung hero behind a revolution in Japan's party culture, the karaoke machine. In the early 1970s, Daisuke Inoue was living the life of a musician in Kobe, Japan. He was a part of a small-time band that performed in bars and clubs across the city. But little did he know that his name would forever be intertwined with a game-changing invention. It all began in 1971, when a unique opportunity knocked on Inoue's door. He received an invitation from the president of a steel company to provide entertainment for a weekend trip. Unfortunately, Inoue couldn't make it to the event. Undeterred, he devised an ingenious solution, a solution that would lay the foundation for something extraordinary. Inoue recorded his band's music onto a cassette tape effectively creating a substitute for his absence. To his surprise, this makeshift arrangement turned out to be a hit. Inspired by the positive response, he conceptualized something that would revolutionize the way people enjoyed music. The karaoke machine, a device that combined a car stereo, a coin box, and a small amplifier. This inventive contraption allowed people to select their favorite songs and sing along to pre-recorded music. In no way began renting out these machines to bars across Kobe. The karaoke concept quickly captured the hearts of partygoers, making it an essential element of Japan's vibrant nightlife. However, what's truly remarkable is Inoue's perspective on his creation. I'm not an inventor. I simply put things that already exist together, which is completely different. I took a car stereo, a coin box, and a small amp to make the karaoke machine. Who would even consider patenting something like that? Inoue's humility shines through his words. While he didn't seek to patent his invention, his creation's impact was undeniable. The karaoke machine became a cultural phenomenon, uniting people through music, laughter, and shared experiences. Daisuke Inoue didn't amass wealth from his invention. His legacy lives on in every karaoke machine enjoyed worldwide. His creation brought joy, camaraderie, and an entirely new way to interact with music. So, here's to Daisuke Inoue the man who connected millions of voices through his ingenious fusion of technology and entertainment. Our journey through history continues with a story that sparked a revolution in firemaking. Meet John Walker, an English chemist whose brilliant creation changed the way we ignite flames, yet left him without the fortune he deserved. In the year 1827, John Walker introduced a game-changing innovation that would shape fire's accessibility and portability, the friction match. These ingenious devices consisted of cardboard strips coated with sulfur, dipped into a potent mixture of potassium chlorate, antimony sulfide, and gum arabic. Walker aptly named his creation friction lights, as they could be ignited through friction, providing a reliable and convenient way to start fires. These early matches quickly caught on, and their popularity soared. Although friction lights might not ring a bell today, that's because they evolved into what we now simply call matches. Walker's revolutionary idea transformed firemaking, making it more accessible to the masses, but here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. For reasons that remain somewhat mysterious, John Walker chose not to patent his brilliant invention. This decision turned out to be both a blessing and a curse. By not patenting his friction lights, Walker allowed others to imitate and even improve upon his creation. In 1829, Samuel Jones of London introduced his own version, dubbed Lucifer's, giving rise to a competitive market for these match-like devices. As the decades rolled on, the demand for these new lucifers grew rapidly. Factories sprang up all over England, ushering in the matchmaking industry, and John Walker's original concept became the cornerstone of a thriving business. Despite Walker's invention serving as the catalyst for this lucrative industry, his lack of patent protection meant that he didn't reap the financial rewards he deserved. While friction lights evolved and multiplied, Walker's fortune remained unlit. Today, as we effortlessly strike a match to ignite a flame, Let's remember John Walker, the innovative mind who revolutionized firemaking for generations to come. His legacy lives on in the everyday act of lighting a match. Our next story takes us into the realm of medical breakthroughs, as we uncover the selfless act that forever changed the landscape of disease prevention. This is the story of Jonas Salk, 
the man behind the first polio vaccine, and his decision to forego personal gain for the sake of humanity. Jonas Salk, a name synonymous with the conquest of polio, achieved monumental acclaim as the developer of the world's first polio vaccine. His work not only saved countless lives but also redefined the possibilities of medical research. Yet, it's his humility and commitment to the greater good that truly set him apart. Salk's journey was marked by incredible dedication. As he worked tirelessly to create a vaccine that could combat the devastating polio virus, he became a symbol of hope and progress. His groundbreaking achievement was celebrated nationwide, and he unintentionally found himself in the spotlight. Despite his discomfort with fame, Salk's defining moment came during an interview with journalist Edward Murrow. In a bold move that would change the course of history, Salk declared that his polio vaccine would not be patented. There is no patent. Could you patent the sun? This profound statement echoed across the world. Salk's decision was clear. He was relinquishing the opportunity for personal wealth so that the vaccine could be accessible to all, regardless of their financial standing. This act of unselfishness was a testament to Salk's unwavering commitment to humanity. He believed that a life-saving breakthrough should be treated as a collective resource, not a source of profit. However, there's an interesting twist to this story that often goes untold. While Salk's decision to forego patenting his vaccine is well known, there's a lesser-known detail involving the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, now known as the March of Dimes. The foundation, which had funded Salk's research, explored the possibility of patenting the vaccine. Yet, their legal advisors determined that the vaccine couldn't be patented due to prior art. It didn't meet the novelty requirements. So, while the intention was there, circumstances prevented the patenting of the vaccine, aligning with Salk's own belief that life-saving discoveries should be free for the benefit of all. Jonas Salk's legacy transcends his scientific achievement. He demonstrated that true heroism isn't about personal glory, but about creating a positive impact that reverberates through generations as we reflect on the impact of the unpatented polio vaccine. Let's remember the man who chose to give the world a gift far greater than any monetary fortune. Our next story delves into the fascinating world of comic book creation, where dreams, struggles, and unforeseen consequences intertwine. Join us as we uncover the journey of Joe Shuster and Jerry Siegel, the visionary minds behind the legendary Superman. Superman, the Man of Steel, has become a symbol of heroism and inspiration across the globe. But his journey to iconic status was far from smooth. Meet Joe Shuster and Jerry Siegel, two friends fresh out of high school, grappling with life's challenges and clinging to their dream of bringing a Kryptonian superhero to life. In the late 1930s, Schuster and Siegel faced rejection after rejection as they shopped around their 13-page Superman comic. Newspaper after newspaper turned them down, seemingly disinterested in the superhero's exploits. It took five long years of determination before their big break finally arrived. In 1938, Detective Comics, now known as DC Comics, agreed to purchase the Superman comic for a mere $130. This deal came with a promise of more work if the comic performed well. $10 per page for new creations. However, there was a twist that would change the course of comic book history. In their eagerness to secure a much-needed payday, Siegel and Schuster unwittingly sold the rights to the Superman character along with the comic. They thought they were letting go of a flop, not realizing that they were parting with a future legend. As we all know now, Superman didn't meet a fate of obscurity. The superhero soared to unprecedented heights of popularity, especially during World War II when he became a symbol of patriotism and hope. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there. After the war, Siegel and Schuster's relationship with DC Comics soured. They were fired, and their names were stripped from the comics they had created. The creators embarked on a legal battle, seeking to regain their rights to the character that had brought them fame. Their attempts to reclaim their creation were met with disappointment. The duo's legal efforts to regain control of Superman were unsuccessful, leaving them with a legacy tainted by legal battles and unfulfilled dreams. Decades later, as the first Superman movie loomed in 1975, DC Comics finally agreed to right some of the wrongs. They restored Schuster and Siegel's names and offered them a small pension as a gesture to avoid negative publicity. While it was a step in the right direction, it couldn't erase the years of struggle and heartache the creators endured. Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel's story is a testament to the complexities of artistic creation, the challenges of navigating legal battles, and the unpredictable nature of fame. As we enjoy the legacy of Superman today, let's remember the minds that gave life to the iconic hero, a tale of talent, perseverance, and the unforeseen consequences that shaped the comic book industry. Stay with us as we uncover more stories of creative brilliance, 
and the individuals who forged our cultural landscape. If you found this segment enlightening, don't forget to show your support by liking and subscribing. Let's keep celebrating the heroes of imagination and determination. Our final chapter brings us to the story of a beverage that has quenched the thirst of millions, but whose creator's journey was marked by both triumph and tragedy. This is the story of John Pemberton, the visionary behind Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, a name that resonates across cultures and generations, was born from the imagination of John Pemberton. This iconic drink, loved by millions, stands as a testament to innovation and entrepreneurship. Pemberton's journey was one of both creation and adversity. In the late 19th century, he formulated the recipe for Coca-Cola, a beverage that would soon capture the world's taste buds. However, as we delve into his tale, we uncover a decision that would forever shape the fate of his creation. In an unexpected twist, Pemberton chose to sell off the rights to his creation for a seemingly modest sum of $1,750. Yet, this decision wasn't a mere lack of vision. It was born out of necessity, driven by his own personal struggles. Pemberton's life was marred by a morphine addiction that stemmed from his injuries sustained during the Civil War. Over time, he also faced the challenges of stomach cancer. To cope with his medical expenses and financial needs, he began selling shares of his business. In a desperate bid to secure his future, Pemberton reluctantly parted ways with his creation, hoping he could at least retain ownership of his patent. However, circumstances forced him to sell his remaining stake and the prize recipe for Coca-Cola to a pharmacist named Asa Candler, shortly before his death in 1888. Candler recognized the potential of Coca-Cola like no one else. He consolidated ownership, buying out all partners' shares, and founded the Coca-Cola Company in 1892. With unwavering determination, Candler turned the drink into a national sensation within just a few years. As the Coca-Cola brand soared to unprecedented heights, it's a bittersweet reality that John Pemberton, the man who birthed this iconic beverage, wasn't there to witness its success. The story of John Pemberton and Coca-Cola reminds us that even the most impactful creations can be marred by life's challenges. His vision lives on through the legacy of the beverage, while his struggles serve as a reminder that greatness often comes with sacrifice. As we raise a glass to Coca-Cola's enduring legacy, let's remember the man whose innovation brought us joy and refreshment. Join us in celebrating the spirits of both creation and resilience. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history's compelling narratives. If this segment resonated with you, don't forget to show your support by liking and subscribing. Until next time, let's continue exploring the stories that have shaped our world. If you found this story captivating, make sure to stay connected by subscribing to our channel. Together, let's honor the creators whose legacies live on.